Hey guys, this is John. Welcome to the July 2019 Title Tuesday on Chess.com. Ten rounds of 3 plus 2 Blitz action. I am locally recording this session, so not streaming it on Twitch. I want to focus. I haven't put in a good Title Tuesday performance in a few months. And I think streaming at the same time does have something to do with that. You know, even just talking through your thoughts obviously has something to do with a, a bit of a diminishment in skills. But I'm feeling motivated today, feeling good. So let's see how I perform. We are waiting for the first game to begin. 390 players should start any second here. Hikaru's in the mix. Alexander Grishuk's in the mix. Yeah, Nara Ditsky, some familiar faces. Ali Reza Faruja, Andrew Tang. He was actually just playing an OTB tournament. His OTB game, last one of the tournament, probably just got done. Okay, I'm playing Women's IM Case of Chess. Let's play a Sicilian. I've got the coffee, I've got the tea. Okay, c3 Sicilian. Uh, I'm going to play a bit of an unorthodox line here to start. I like to play this line, especially in Blitz. Just poses white some potentially unique problems. So attacking this pawn on e4. Okay, queen e2. That's one of the stronger ways to play against this. And let's play e6. Okay, knight f3. And I know that black often looks to exchange the light square bishops in this line. But first I'm going to play bishop e7. Mm-hmm. Um, let's play d6. Castle. White may push e5, but I think I'm protected against some sort of Greek gift. Okay, knight b3. Now I'm thinking about either taking and playing knight c6, or maybe playing a6, followed by knight bd7. Some standard stuff. Um, let's think about this for just a moment. I'm going to play a6. See how white develops this position. Yeah, let's go knight bd7. Play queen c7. So Rui Lopez-like play here from white. Bishop d2, and I think I'm going to start crawling forward on this side of the board. See how my opponent reacts. Okay, just centralizes. Kind of feels like they're getting ready for an e5 break. Let's play rook c8. Because on e5, I may take and then take on f3. I'm playing around with the idea of doing that. Yeah, so I could play bishop takes f3 or take e5 first. Let's do that first. See how white responds. Bishop takes f3 is very interesting here. I'm going to try it, I think. So, yeah, if white takes with the queen, I could take on e5 was the point. So I'm going to play this now. Mm -hmm. Threatening mate. Let's play g6. Mm -hmm. And I think rook e8 is probably appropriate here. Maybe some bishop f8 ideas. Long term, I'd like to go after this. I have a strong knight on d5. I may play c4. Be curious how white tries to attack me here. Okay, pawn h4. So c4 followed by knight c5 is possible. Kind of like the idea of just trading that dark square bishop, though. Hmm. I'm also thinking of takes. Yeah, that's not going to work. c5, back, knight c5. White's going to plop that queen on g4, so let's just look to trade this bishop. Seems fine. Okay, take with a rook. I want to keep this knight attacking here. Mm -hmm. Almost thinking about f5 in this position. But it's probably not quite justified. Could play king g7 first. Although that invites some potential problems. Honestly, maybe f5. Let's play f5. Potentially a weakening move, but I'm going to take with a rook and try to get counterplay down the f-file. And if take, take, knight, h5, I think I can take that knight. And then run away with my king. I'm behind on the clock, so I'd like to mix it up a little bit. In terms of trying to put white on their back foot. Okay. So let's bring this over. 
potential sacrifice here. I don't think I'm worried about it yet, though. Oh, okay, bonds away from white. Interesting. So let's go here. Rookie seven is possible here, but I was thinking maybe knight b6 against that. Is knight b6 a good reply? I think it is. Attack the queen? Looks pretty good to me. If white plays queen takes, I take, and then I'm defending my own queen. It could be a double trade on g6, but then I have knight a4 at the end of the line. Looks good. So yeah, I think this is a handy defense. There is rookie eight, but I feel like after this, I should be fine. White can't easily bring her queen to my back rank. Okay, so white trades. Takes there. All right, so let's play this move. Let's take the pawn. Yeah, material's equal, but I like my position a little bit more. Now let's go rook d6, try to activate. Mainly because white has these double pawns and the knight's out of the game. But still a long ways to go in this one, I think. Maybe here, followed by rook d2, something like that. Somewhat hard for white to move at the moment. Maybe I check and then play rook here. That's another possibility. Okay, so trying to bring the knight to e3 maybe. Feels like I should pin here, so I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Let's attack that bishop. Look for this. Looks hard to stop. The king can't ever go to g2. Step here. Check, I'll go up to g5. Yeah, I think that was basically forced on white's part. Hmm. Now, rookie three probably is the easiest here. Uh, rookie two, rather. Let's do that. Don't want to spend too much time. I thought about rook takes f1, king takes f3, but I don't think I need to simplify yet. Yeah, knight there. Let's just take this. Go here. Idea of g4. Undermining. Okay, there is knight c5, which threatens a big fork. Which I missed until now. Okay, so let's take and then... Yikes. Okay, let's go here. Probably making this a little more complicated than I would like. I'm gonna try to play rook b2 next. Go after this pawn. Oh, now I can just take, and that's winning. Okay, so get the first victory. Yeah, I wonder after king g2 what the smoothest way to win that position is. I mean, I could have played rook takes f1, king takes f1, king takes f3. But again, I didn't feel a great need to simplify, but eliminating the knight is pretty compelling, being able to just take that knight right away. I also thought about rook takes b3 right here. 
that may be a simple way to do it. Rook takes b3 and then just make a pass to a pawn. That's probably what I should do in hindsight. The knight is nicely centralized, but it has to stay tethered to the defense of c3. So, okay. So we get that first victory. Just taking a look at the players in the mix here. Yeah, huge field for this title Tuesday. 400 players. Let's take a look at a top game if we can. How about Grishuk? The Blitz Phenom himself, down a pawn in a rook ending and down on the clock, as per usual. Grishuk's time management is worse than mine. <laughs> Only difference is I'm not a world elite player. <laughs> okay, white is just winning here, I think. Rook d6 now? Uh, okay, maybe it's not a win. Black's counterattacking a4, but this would be a super tough endgame to hold with limited time. King there. Yeah, white's just going to push this pawn. Uh, maybe rook here, try to give a check on that square. Next. Okay, he goes behind the A-pawn. Yeah, still very tough for black to hold this. B-pawn's super dangerous. Okay, so check, king c7. So Grishuk is trying to scurry in here. And they drew. Okay. Mm. White's probably kicking himself a little bit. That looked very nearly winning. But that GM defense, right, guys? It yeah, might have been a win somewhere. King here. I mean, even at the end, I guess white should try a little bit. You can play rook a8 in this position and deny black the c8 square. Something like rook a8. Let's say check, king here. This actually is winning, right? Because if king c6, there's rook check. I feel like we're going to get to a Lucina position. I feel like white might have been winning there. But at any rate, let's take a look at another game. GM Honest Girl. Yeah, you know, Bishop takes f3 in my last game was, I think, an important move. Damaging white structure. I was on the defensive a little bit around my king. In hindsight, maybe I should have played f5 right when white went bishop h6. So that might have been better because my rook was under attack. But if f5 is my plan, maybe I should do it immediately. Although, no, probably not. It's probably better to do it after the dark squares. Dark square bishops get traded. Okay, Honest Girl has an extra queen here. A queen a1 just to be safe, covering some key squares. Any major upsets in round one? Looks like all the usual favorites are on one out of one. Hopefully I get paired one with one of these guys. That would be awesome. Ah, so Honest Girl, someone in the chat says this is Nigel Short. Is Honest Girl an anagram for Nigel Short? I think it is. I think it is. I, I remember hearing something about that. Like maybe he's mentioned that before in a tweet. So, okay, interesting if he's in the mix. Yeah, a lot of good players turn up for Title Tuesday. And now we are officially at 400 players. What are the remaining games going on here? Let's check out GM Margency. Ooh, looks like white's winning here. If the king goes to the A file, which is basically forced, rook A3 will happen. Okay, Margency takes that. Uh, maybe two games left. Ooh, we got a king bishop and knight versus king checkmate. So what do you guys know about this one? Well, main thing you should know is that you want to drive the enemy king to the same color corner as your bishop, which Briakin is trying to do right now. So I would make a waiting move here with the bishop, like bishop h4. Mm, not sure about that waiting move, because king here, although yeah, you can still deny that square this way. So black is trying to herd that king over to a1. That said, though, it's better if the bishop's here, because it makes it a little bit easier to uh, corral that king. Okay, king b1, because king d1, knight b2 is mate. King b1's forced. They are on move 112. Uh, looks like white still has plenty of moves, though. Or, uh, sorry, black does. To execute this mate. And now we're very close to checkmate. Yep, knight d2 mate or knight a3. Okay, so Briakin takes that one. And is there one game left? Yep, one game. White's completely winning. Just 
just a matter of time here. Astute viewers of my channel will notice that I did not post a video yesterday. It was just an extremely busy day. I got home around 10 p.m., which is the time I usually release my videos. And I thought about it, but I didn't have su anything super compelling to share, and I didn't want to just rush out a video of low quality for you guys, so decided to rest up. Load management, if you follow the NBA. <laughs> That's what it was yesterday. Just take it easy, prepare for Title Tuesday. And just so you guys know, that's, you know, how things may go sometimes. I have been posting a video a day for quite a while now. Uh, I think probably about three months straight at this point. And it's been a lot of fun, but I don't expect that to continue. Here, Black is playing out the hopeless king and rook against king on move 135 here. So, just so you guys know, it doesn't mean anything necessarily if I don't post a video for a day in terms of my future frequency, but... It's just nice to have a break once in a while, whatever you're doing. And YouTube still is a hobby for me. It's a, a side project. I love you guys, but YouTube alone does not pay the bills, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe someday it will. I mostly do it for fun, and I enjoy sharing my love of chess with you guys. Okay, GM El Gasanov, let's play D4. And thank you guys for watching all the time, by the way. I know I say that a lot, but I really mean it. GM El Gasanov, let's play a Queen's Gambit. And he plays the QGA, Queen's Gambit accepted. Underrated opening, in my opinion. Hmm, Knight C6, okay, interesting approach there. Um, let's play E3, just looking to get this back. Okay, take. Let's play H3, I think this move is helpful. Go Knight C3. Mm-hmm. So could play g4 and then try to go after that bishop. That seems to be the most ambitious, so I think I will do that. Yeah, look to take this at some point. Do weaken your king side a little bit in playing this way, though. So knight on the edge, but notice how I played knight h4 only after black had played knight f6. Okay, so there, probably should take. And now queen f3 or bishop d2, maybe even e4, not e4, knight b6. I could take and play queen b3, but there's knight there. Okay, let's just play this move. Seems most reasonable. Reinforce, but I may go here in the near future. We'll see what black does in this position. As far as where I'm going to put my king, that is up in the air. Uh, okay. Hmm. I'm going to do something a little unorthodox. I'm going to put my bishop on g2. I know this is a maneuver in these type of structures, so I'm going to go for it. And he breaks. He breaks indeed. It's a good idea. Maybe I can play to open the position somehow, bishop g2. Don't know if I really like taking, because that seems to catch me off guard a bit. Okay, I'm going to sack a pawn in order to try to generate some play. So if queen takes, maybe bishop takes c6, pawn takes queen f3. Thinking along those lines. Black's a little underdeveloped. Yeah, I did, definitely didn't like taking on e5. Yeah, let's take. Even though I'm giving up my bishop pair to do this, at least I get to saddle black with these weak pawns. Go here. Good practical decisions. That's the name of the game. In true clock as a weapon style whenever possible. I'd like to castle short and post a rook on e1. Now I think castling short's okay. My queen is helping defend this. Okay, bishop there, uh, queen there, rather. Okay, could play rook e1 or bishop e3. Let's play bishop e3. Expecting knight e5, and then I think I'm going to castle. Castle short again, as before. This knight can't really move, because that would be an issue. Oh, forgot about this. Definitely underestimated bishop d6. 
Yikes. Okay, let's try this. So check king f1. Hopefully I can I can survive somehow. Maybe I should have cast a queen set. <laughs> so trying to set up some sort of alignment issue, but if black just castles here, castle short, let's say. It probably won't happen. I have won't have too much. Okay, black goes long. Hmm. Okay, let's step back here. Cover G2. Don't see any good discoveries that I can play, even after I've covered H2. So black just centralizes. Hmm. Not really sure here. Thinking about take. Let's take. It's counterintuitive, but I feel like I gotta get rid of that knight. It's just being too much of an annoyance there. And let's play this rook over. Attack this pawn. Hmm. Rook e4. Okay, let's go here. Okay, I'm going to invite him to sack on e3. This looks very dangerous for me on the dark squares, but I need to coordinate my pieces. Let's at least try to give him a tough decision. Okay, so he plays kind of a smart move there. Um, let's bring this over. If here, maybe bishop c5 is possible. Okay. I think this is basically forced. F4, maybe bishop d2, try to come to c3. Can I play bishop d4? Actually, I can. I might just go queen in, though. Well, gotta try something. Might go queen in here, but he can't take, so I take c6 and then e8's hanging in the end. Hmm. Gonna take, not sure what else to do. Mm. If I go up the board, I'm afraid of rook d8. Don't like that. the look of that. Okay, so still down a pawn. Uh, maybe dropping that pawn now, too. He didn't take it. So let's play b4. All right, I guess I'll let him get a pass pawn over here. This may be a bad idea. Ooh, he just takes. All right, well, at least try to put his king on a slightly awkward position here. Mm, time pressure, weird things can happen. Rook here, try to threaten this. Not easy for him to escape, actually, in some instances. Hmm. That's a good idea. Preparing king b7. Hmm. Okay, just be annoying. 
It's the name of the game. Not going to trade. Try to avoid a trade for now. Can I have a threat? We saw it. Maybe some other th weird threats here. Maybe not. You might just be able to take. Yep. Okay. Do I have anything here? I'm not seeing it. Let's try to double. Ah, you could just check. Oh, not over yet. Battling, guys. Doing my best. Okay, I can block at least. It's helpful. Bishop e3. Ooh. Ah, bishop d4. Mm. Okay. I'm going to resign that one. Well, I hung on a while. Managed to create some threats when I was down two pawns. Yeah, I thought here I might have had a sliver of hope, because if he's not careful, rook takes c7, check. Or bishop takes c7, even. But yeah, king c8 looks like it's smoke and mirrors. Hmm. I think e5 was a turning point in that game. I was pretty much worse after e5. So, maybe bishop f1 was too extravagant here. Probably should put the bishop on e2 instead, so that when e5 comes, maybe take and play queen c2. Try to castle long. So, all right. Let's check out Hikaru's game if he's still playing. He just won. Narditsky. He won. Vladimirovich. Draw. Oparin. Won. Probably not too many games left. My game went pretty long. Check out Andrew's game. He also won. I love this guy's beard, by the way. Games just aren't updating so much. But that was my impression of my last game, I think, after that e5 move. I was on my back foot. But at least I didn't lose because of the clock. Maybe I could have won the g-pawn somehow at the end, but with the doubled c-pawns, it was tough. Probably need to put my king on g6 or e6 somewhere. Let's check out I am hustle time. Or FM Hustle Time versus FM M Boyan. Four versus three rook ending. Artak Manukian looking like he's doing the Lucina technique. Yeah, rook d8 check, rook d4. Classic. That's what I thought that Grisha game would get into in round one. So that's a win for black. This game was drawn. This one also drawn, so I guess this is the last game of the round. And this endgame should be a draw. Although if you're white with one less pawn, you're going to get tortured for a long time. I think getting the king up to f4 is a nice achievement for white, though. Provided they don't run into some sort of mating net. Uh huh. And white's looking to trade a pair of pawns. Yeah, because in general, trading a pair of pawns should favor the defender in this situation. Try to get it down to king and rook upon against king and rook, whereupon... If the kings are like this and the pawn isn't so far advanced, there's a number of drawing setups. Ooh, now black cuts off their own king. I don't know about that decision. This white may even think about this now. This would be very hard to, to do something with. Although now they're going to check and put the rook on e4, I suppose. Because if the king goes to g5, there's rook g4 check and pick up the g-pawn. So 
I'm not sure that was the most accurate. Maybe just waiting on the e-file would have been better. So black should definitely play this, I think. Now white's got to go back. Everything else is trouble, so... Okay, rook g4. Mm, not a whole lot has changed. Just wait on the e-file if you're black. Or white, rather. Not sure why you would go there. He's maybe trying to stop f4, but... I think better to keep that black king cut off. And if you're new to Title Tuesday, by the way, this can happen in Title Tuesday. The field's waiting for one or two games to finish. You see a lot of theoretical endgames in this event because there's so many players and those games tend to go a while with the two-second increment. So this two is drawn. Really nothing has changed here. Just a two versus one, so white was able to get another pair of pawns off, board, off the board. Got to be a little careful because of the past h-pawn. I probably would have just played king f2 there if I were white. King f2, rook g4, king f3. Yeah, because now the h-pawn is a little more dangerous than you would like. I think white's going to go rook here next. Defend from behind. And on rook g4, play king f3. Black might go here, and white can try to close in. King f3. A little tricky. h3, king g3, king f5, something like that. Okay, but instead we have this. A uh, little trap. If king takes h4, there was rook h1. White's not falling for that. Game continues. Shout out to those of you who are watching <laughs> in these end games where I'm not playing. But, you know, it's an opportunity to potentially learn something. I think we're going to see a draw here pretty soon. There we go. Repetition. Okay, so round three coming up. Let's try to get back into positive territory. We're at 50%. Once again, this is a 10 round, 3 plus 2 event. PL1. I am PL1. Okay, I'll play my usual against c4 and e4. This variation. Um, okay, I'm going to play g6. I actually don't face this too often. But I'm going to Fianchetto and try to slowly get this pawn back. And white just offloads it immediately. Interesting. Okay, that is interesting. I'm going to try to avoid taking it for now. Because ideally, I would like to take with a piece rather than a pawn. I don't want to allow a check on the e-file. Hmm. Let's just play a6. Okay, now I can think about how I want to try to get this back. Let's play b5 first. Let me play around with this idea. Bishop b7, knight b6, I'm thinking. White's probably going to post this bishop on f4 sometime soon. Hmm. Okay, let's push here. Don't really want that knight hopping to c5, so I think I should take... Bishop g5. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. Threatening this. Also, if bishop f4, I can take here now. So I'm not sure about that move. Maybe it was better for white to go bishop f4 directly. White could play something sneaky here, like maybe queen c1, so that on queen takes d6, there's bishop f4. That would be an interesting idea. So I'm just trying to think what I would do against that. Potentially h6, maybe? No, I'm not sure about h6. Maybe bishop b7. Feels like white needs some trickery to keep an advantage here. Mm hmm He must have heard me. <laughs> Good move. Yeah, sneaky one. 
I could play something like queen b6 here. Queen b6 might be decent. So unpinning, I'm threatening knight takes e4 now. It's a weird move to play because, I, again, I want to take this pawn, but I'm trying to force this bishop off the diagonal so I can go here. He takes, okay. What's the follow-up? Queen c7 now? Maybe I play bishop d8 or bishop takes d4 against that. No, nah, probably bishop d8. Bishop takes d4 would lose material. Got queen c7. Hmm. Can I also just play this move too, I wonder? But knight e5 is annoying. Probably need to play bishop d8 here. Just checking to see that I don't lose material. I don't think I do. Yeah, his queen's too annoying on that square, combined with his bishop here, stopping rook b7. Actually, if he takes, I can take with the rook now. Important points. So maybe he'll go to c5. He does take. Okay, that feels like it's doing me a favor. Yeah, let's take this way. Just try to win this guy, basically. At long last, it's move 19. I still haven't won that d6 pawn. There may still be some obstacles to negotiate. Okay, there. I'm thinking about this move. I'm thinking about bishop f6 as well. I think I like this one better. Just stop rook c6, attack this pawn. If knight e5, I'll take, I, th I think. Two bishops side by side are usually pretty good. I mean, these bishops don't have a lot of scope, but seems to still hold true. Hmm. I'm just going to take. This is still hanging. If he takes here, maybe take with the brook. Although then he plays bishop d5, so I'm hmm, not sure about that. I'll maybe take with the bishop instead, it's easier. Probably take with the bishop. Yeah, let's take with the bishop. I'm head on the clock now, so let's see if I can press this, because I think I'm definitely out of the woods at this point. So let's take and go here. And I'm the one who can start thinking about playing for a win. Hopefully. <laughs> Looking for that. Hmm. Okay, let's take. Hmm. He wants 95 business. Let's start with this though. Maybe bishop f6 soon. Or bishop here next. Trying to stop 95. Okay, seven. Okay, let's slowly try to work my way out of this. Now here maybe? Because here I have B3, funnily enough. Ooh. Double attack, undefended pieces. If he plays knight e5, I check and take his rook. It's almost made. He'd have to play bishop f1 there. Timely. Okay. All right. I feel really good about that game, guys. I mean, the objective evaluation was probably in White's favor early on. I was dealing with that pesky d pawn, but I mostly feel good about my time management. That's the main thing I'm working on and why I'm recording this locally. 
so good. I feel like I played that kind of clock as a weapon style, just looking back on the amount of time I spent on certain moves. I think my longest think was 18 seconds on move 16, this queen b6 move, which was a tough moment. Even when white played queen c7 a couple moves later, I didn't deliberate too much. Okay, that was a 19 second move, but can live with that. All right, feel pretty good. I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. Let's put up a game for a second here. Krikor and Naroditsky, I'll be right back. Okay, this game is still going. Krikor is losing. Let's check the standings. I did wash my hands, by the way, guys, just so you know. I know you guys are always wondering about that. <laughs> Ooh, Hikaru is playing Hess. Maybe we should check that out. Hikaru won. Robert Hess, one of my opponents in the recent uh, Clock as a Weapon series. We played maybe five games or so in that series. Yeah, and Krikor did lose. So what other games are left here that we can check out? Okay, so Andrew is going down. A little tricky though, because his pawn is pushing up this way. So if white were to take there, a2, that's a well-known draw because white's king is not close enough. But with the pawn two scores away, this is this will be an easy win for Zuber. Oh, that's a nice move right there, because of a2, there's queen c1 mate. So he's going to get super close, and Andrew's going to be in Zugzwang soon. Like king b2, check, king a2, and then just uh, play a king move. And then go take the pawn next move on king a1, only move. Okay, so Andrew goes down. Oh, here's, I see that FM that I played recently in a Clock as a Weapon video. Ali Rasbad, he's strong. Arian Tari versus Renato Terry. Looks like Renato is completely winning here. Yeah, not a whole lot to calculate in this position. If queen, I guess c6 might have been a concern. All right. So Tari throws in the towel. Here's some GM versus GM action. Hmm. What's going on here? Looks like black is pushing with that h-pawn, but you gotta be careful you don't get mated somehow if you're black. Because black's king is pretty boxed in. Yeah, when white plays f4, like how does this king escape now? Because g1's covered, so... I don't know if you want to push h2. Might be unwise to do it in a way. But black goes ahead and play, plays it. Good time management for black. Look at this. Over a minute... They're on move 90. That's that's what I aspire to be like, guys. Like Vishnu Prasanna. Oh, and look at that. It bore fruit here, Black's whole concept, because now this pawn is queening. So his time management paid dividends big time. Probably just promote here. I don't see an issue with promoting. White would try to work their king up to g7, but Black always has bishop d5 to stop an f7 type move, so very comfortably winning. King g7, and then just play something like rook f3, or yeah, start moving the king back. Okay, so nice technique there by black. What's going on in this game? It's a draw. Seems like the rounds are taking a little bit longer than normal. I think it's just because of the field. Okay, philosopher is next. Let's play d4. Fm philosopher. Let's play knight f3 this game. Move two. 
c4. Mm, okay, Benoni. Let's play d5. Maybe a Blumenfeld with b5. No Blumenfeld. Okay. Play bishop f4. I do like to play this variation from time to time. h3, e3. I probably need to brush up on the theory a bit in this line, but... It's an interesting one. You don't put the pawn on e4. You try to control black's counterplay. And I think here knight e2 is what you want to do to stop this. Stop knight e4. Mm, okay. I always wonder here if I can take this pawn. I have a feeling it's bad for some reason, but <laughs> I don't know exactly why. Like if I take queen b6, I have knight c4. Is curiosity going to kill the cat here? Let's find out. If I tank for 23 seconds, I feel like I need to find out. Trying to cut out those longer things. But I don't see anything wrong with this, because I think on queen b6, like if my knight was still on f3, it would be bad, because it would be a double attack here and here. But I can meet that with knight c4. So let's put him on the clock. Just the big thing I was debating in those 20 seconds is, you know, is black still in their prep? And to some degree, what's wrong with this move? But mostly, is black moving fast because they know what they're doing? Okay, knight there. Mm, so simple route. Yeah, looks like they're just going to try to win d5. I see. Could take c5. But that unleashes black's pieces. Well, let's take. Again, I feel like I kind of have to play this way. Maybe bishop d4 here. Try to stabilize. Let's try it. Maybe take with a pawn if black takes. Also, probably nothing wrong with taking with the bishop. I actually think the other knight would have been more annoying because then bishop d4, bishop takes d4. So, okay, there. Now queen takes d4 as a threat, so I gotta be careful. Uh, bishop c4, perhaps? Threatening. Oh no can't that would allow that that would allow exactly what i said i wanted to avoid so knight f3 maybe knight f3 bishop f5 rook c1 let's try that so if i played bishop e2 bishop f5 i wasn't liking the counter play that my opponent was going to get so i'm going to try this it takes a little longer now to castle but I'm trying to control these squares. I'm trying not to allow a knight coming to d3. So, black knows my next two moves. Pretty clear. I just want to play bishop e2 and castle. So black's going to try to use this window of time to attack me, presumably. I'd say mostly looking at moves involving moving this knight. I don't think knight c2 is ever really going to work. Queen a5, okay. Yeah, let's just play my intended move. Hmm. Okay, so black actually, it's a little surprising. They're just going to go kind of a strategic route here. Uh, queen b3, maybe? Just try to get rid of... The pin situation, I think it's fine. If take, take. There's no rook takes, pawn takes, because my knight is defending here, so that seems fine. Now I'm on this, I'm on this. I'm expecting bishop c8, yep. Okay, maybe now bishop f3. Looks helpful, attack b7. So black has a little compensation. They have the bishop pair. The position's kind of open, but I gotta be better here with the extra pawn. Okay, so there, black's looking for bishop takes h3 ideas. So king h1 seems like a good no-nonsense move, or king h2 maybe? Let's play king h2. Try to defend h3 a little bit better. This is a threat, I think, so can look to play that if I get the chance. I'm ahead on the clock. Maybe knight e4 if the knight moves, although i got to watch out for tactics with rook takes e4. This may be bad. Okay, so he covers. I'm thinking about queen b6. 
style moves here. Uh, also just pivoting this knight. This may be decent. Queen b6, rook d8. Most likely. Let's play queen b6 though to start. Looks helpful. I don't know that I want to allow knight e4 next. So I'm thinking actually maybe a rook move like rook here. Hopefully I'm not abandoning my king too much. Oh, there is knight d7 too. But maybe there's nothing with that. Hmm. Okay. Play faster, John. Let's go back. I'm a little bit nervous about my queen. I'm thinking maybe try for knight d5 next. Hmm. Yeah, let's try this. Uh, F2 is hanging. Wow, did not even notice that. Yikes. F2 straight up hanging here. Okay, can take e e3 now. Suddenly this is not good. But I did not know what to do there. Yikes. Maybe e2, I suppose. Can trade queens if he wants, yeah. That's a good no-nonsense way to play. Take b2. Mm. Yeah, the wheels really fell off here, guys. Yeah, bishop d5 looks pretty deadly here. Okay, bishop d4, I'll resign. Not good. That position collapsed real fast. Chalk up the loss. I mean, it's a bit of a hard one to play for me because I'm up the pawn, but there's no convenient way to unwind. I think I hesitated a little bit too much on uh, knight e2 type ideas, and I just completely missed that queen h4 was hitting this pawn. I only associated queen h4 with stuff like trying to use the g4 square or g5, g4. So, yeah, I got a bit too wrapped up in my own play here with knight d5 and the trade. Although, to be honest, like this position may just be completely fine for black. I think black has a lot of counterplay here. Okay, so lost that one. These FMs, man, they're tough. They bring their A game in Title Tuesday. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is not a Title Tuesday game, <laughs> given that it's 44.5 to 11.5, and, and they're moving at light speed. So let's go to an actual Title Tuesday game. Is Sakaro playing still? I think his game is done. So I'm on an even score through four rounds. Bishop takes f6, rook takes c5 or something? Okay, so white's going to lose their queen. Maybe there's some knight f6. Why are these players playing so fast? I guess Vishnu Prasanna was just playing fast because... He had a bad position, but <laughs> I was commenting on the the ultra bullet in the previous game, but this game is a title Tuesday game, and they're flying through that with a lot of time. Okay, what about this one? Tennis Master versus Lunatic X. Surely White will take here, right? One way or the other. Okay, but can White avoid losing the F5 pawn or set up a mating net? It's not easy. Black's barely coordinating here in some way. I'll maybe check and go take. Oh, no, you can't because this rook's hanging. Always white has a rook under attack, strangely enough. Probably check there and then move the rook somewhere. Like maybe rook f7, but... Plays rook a7.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, still tough for black to hold this just because white's rooks are dominating black's king and you got to watch out for mating nets constantly. King e4, yeah, I like that move. Threaten stuff like king here. Some fragile coordination for black. Okay, white repeats. What other games are going on right now? Check the standings too. Okay. Not a crazy amount of players on four out of four at the moment. So Hikaru, how did Hikaru do? He gave up a draw. One of the favorites. We know Grisha gave up that early draw, round one. Ooh, and White gets a trade. Okay, because I guess they think they can just win the end game, which is probably true. Black has an F pawn, but. I would suspect this is losing for black. King d5 or king e5? King e5, probably. Can we push now? Check and then push, most likely. Mm -hmm. Threatens mate. Mm, I would have liked the king over here to support b5. But he's just going to go win that pawn. Pawn's under attack. White judges that he can push it. Okay. Knight d5 now. Uh, and check in b7. And that's winning. Black has a check. But this is a good pattern to know. Rook supporting a pawn like that. If you're not attacking the pawn, the pawn's usually just going to push through. You'll have to sacrifice something for it. All right, so a few other games remaining here. Whoa, look at this game. Safe to say that black is down a decisive amount of material in this one. And how about these remaining two games? Bishop endgame here. White. Who's trying to play for a win here? I would assume black, with black's king having a few more options. Yeah, if you're white, you got to think about both this and this. At the same time, looks pretty tough to crack this position. Also, black's pawns are on safer squares right here. White's bishop constantly has to monitor the b-pawn in particular if black ever maneuvers their bishop around to attack it. But it, it should be a draw. I feel like this position is drawn. Just really got to restrict this black king. And then the last one is smooth as a hedgehog which just ended. Okay, so this will be our final game. So just thinking about improvements I can make, because in that previous game, I like how I played in the opening. I mean, I grabbed that pawn after thinking about it for a little bit. Black did have counterplay. I'm pretty sure knight f takes on d5 would have been fine for black, given black a lot of compensation. But then after that, I got coordinated. It's just kind of... I think I need to be a bit more decisive, maybe trying to cross my opponent's plans or you know, stuff like queen b3 later in that game when black soon played queen h4 and caused me all these problems. Probably a little too indecisive. Okay, black's still trying to work their king around. But now white's going to hold out a different way and probably just shuttle the bishop again. Yeah, it's like, where does the black king go from here is the thing. All these squares are shut down. And if black's bishop ever leaves this diagonal, then it's not inconceivable that white could jump up here and try to go take these pawns. But okay, they drew. So round five coming up. Important game here. I'd like to get into the second half of the tournament with a good score. Okay, playing NM Hidden Dragon. Crouching Tiger. Where are you? Uh, let's play D5. D4, D5 opening by transposition. I like playing Bishop F5 here. Slow Slav. Knight H4. I tend to play Bishop E4. It's a little bit more dynamic. Bishop G6 if I want to be really solid. But basically you're trying to provoke this move. 
I've had pretty good results on the black side of this opening. Compact position. For those of you who play the Scandi as black, hashtag Team Scandi. You might like the Slav as well. Structurally, they're pretty similar. Pawns on c6, e6. Just in the Slav, you're holding out with this pawn on d5 a lot of times. Bishop e7, take a look at this knight on h4. Okay, and he doesn't move it. So here you start to think about taking on c4, but I'm first going to do this. And I'm expecting white to play rook c1. That's often what they do. He takes first, okay. And now he takes there. Interesting. Interesting way of handling this. Let me think about how I want to play this. And I could take with the C pawn. So if I take this way, please work C1. I feel like he's getting in E4 pretty quickly here. Don't think there's tactics on H2. There usually are not. Hmm. I don't know. It's interesting, though. Could take with the knight as well. No, I'm thinking a while on this move, but it's an important decision. Let's take with the knight. So I'm giving up my d5 base, but I'm trying to keep the c-file closed, mainly, and avoid some pin situations on the c-file. But downside is I'm giving white a free hand in the center, stuff like e4. White's going to be able to play that freely coming up, but I hope that it creates weaknesses for white more than anything. Yeah, e4 immediately. Let's take this. See how white recaptures. Pawn. Recaptures with the pawn. Okay. So, probably castle here. Maybe look for c5. White puts the king on f2. Okay. Yeah, maybe c5. I need some counterplay here, so let's enlist the c-pawn. And look to attack d4 if white allows me to. Let's play here. Mm -hmm. I may play e5 as well. I mean, e5 is definitely interesting here too. Let's play that before white gets too coordinated. Looking to swap everything, play bishop c5. I'd like to trade off the dark square bishops if I can. Bishop for bishop. So that's my threat at the moment. Okay, white goes there. Think about c4, just to grab a little bit of space. And again, maybe bishop c5 in mind. Actually, bishop c5 could be very annoying next move. Because white probably will play queen c2 or maybe queen a4. And either way, I can play that bishop c5 move. Yeah, queen there. So let's do this. This is going to be failing for white. So I'm, I'm thinking white's going to play queen d2, yeah. And try to slowly unwind. Queen b6 is possible, or f5 maybe. f5 seems a little bit out of place, though. Hmm. Trying to think what to do here. b5 maybe? I don't know. I'll try b5. It's kind of inviting a4, but it seems interesting. Okay, now I get to play this move, which makes me kind of happy because I can stop white from playing a4. So white's thinking maybe attack. Attack me. Fair. F6 perhaps? Hmm. Let's try it. Idea, go h5. Or uh, g5, rather, if white plays h5. And I know they can continue with h6, and they might. Hmm, that's interesting. 
h6 I might take on e3. It allows h7 check, but I think it's okay. So white plays rook there, kind of a preparatory move. For e4, or some sort of business like that. All right, well, let's attack. Try to go after the c3 pawn. We're going to see what happens here. Let's take. And I am going to take, I think. And then play king here. And rook over, play rook here. And swap stuff. Hopefully d6 is not a problem. I don't think it is. But that is a move I should have probably taken into greater consideration. Yeah, he plays it. Hmm. Okay, if there's a if there's a trade I can take e3, I guess. It's a weird position. He trades. Okay, let's get the knight back. I need to stop D d7 for sure. Hopefully after this, he can't somehow promote his d-pawn with like a f4 type push. Okay, let's put the brakes on that pawn for now. I'm going after this guy. If I win c3, I think all bets are off. I may even be better. Definitely take back though first. Don't want him getting connected pawns. Okay. Take. Take. Let's take that. Uh, let's check, I guess. Go here. Play a little bit faster now. Don't think I should be too scared of his G pawn. Let's check. Threatening 93 stuff. Um, or just push. Bishop f5, I have 93. Check. Go take that. There we go. Okay. Ooh, sharp game. That was a fun one, though. Yeah, definitely some sharp tactics, especially when there was that standoff on the h file. And with him pushing his d pawn, I had to navigate some stuff here. I actually think if he had inserted rook takes h8 somewhere, that might have been a better option for him. And also in this basic position, yeah, no, no, let's say let's say right here, before he had played d6, he plays rook takes h8, I have to play rook takes h8, and now he goes d6. The idea of d6, by the way, if you missed it, is that if I take, he can take here with check. Although even that arguably is fine for me. Oh no, it's not fine. King, king g6, rook takes here. And if I go to the back rank, he has a check. So yeah, that seems to be a better version of this. Sorry, I'm getting confused with my moves here. Because, so rook takes h, rook takes h8, rook takes h8, d6, queen b6. Yeah, now let's just say he swaps here and takes here. This is the line I was worried about in the game. Can he play this and then bishop g4 and just threaten to push d7? I guess I'm just in time with my king. Here, here, king f7, so that of d7 I can play king e7. But man, it's close. I guess I have this threat and go after this now that the king's in the vicinity, but the, something along these lines would have been a lot more uh, sharp and potentially better for white. Okay, so let's take a look at a game here. Bortnik versus Moskalenko. These guys are both very strong. 
Happy to have got that win, though. Thinking back on my games. So what... Have I won all my games with black and I lost both my games with white? Yeah. <laughs> I'm 3-0 with black, 0-2 with white so far this tournament. I don't know about you guys. I'd be interested in your, your feedback in the comments, but... I sometimes feel it's easier to play black in blitz games. Oh, that's a very nice shot. Rook f5, deflection move. Black has to take it, and then white queens. Wow. Quite the turnaround right there. Now, white should be winning, although this will take some technique. Black's going to try to hold this c-pawn for a while. Oh, that's a gutsy call by Black. And the king and the rook so far away from each other. Now I'll play something like rook e2. Stabilize. He's going to challenge white to somehow win here. Somehow win this pawn. It's going to be tough for white. Yeah, rook h2. Can check here maybe. King h3. What other games do we have? Because this one's probably going to go a while. Naroditsky versus Chess Warrior. Naroditsky wins. Okay. Definitely rooting for Danya. He's my buddy. He's on 5 out of 5. He's a great, great player. Very good at Blitz and Bullet, too. He's just a great chess player in general. Hikaru's on 4.5 out of 5. Chess Weebs. An FM. Dry County. Another player I played recently in Clock as a Weapon. And also Iturizaga, Lunatic X, Sugirov, Operin. Another Fide Master, all these players on 5 out of 5, so still pretty crowded up top. Uh, what other games might we be able to check out here? How about this one? White trying to hold an opposite color bishop ending. Yeah, this looks completely drawn. Oh, maybe not. Okay, because... Yeah, still should be a draw, though. White will be able to control a1, I think. Yeah, bishop d6, accurate, stopping a3. So check again. Black has to give up control of the c1 square. Yeah. Don't think black's going to succeed in winning this. White's going to try to put their king on a1. And just have the bishop always guard the e-pawn. Dead draw. Lots of time for white here, too. Two minutes, wow. Again, clock goals right there. Okay, what other games do we have? Uh, Moskalenko actually won that one with the king and the rook. How did that happen? How did he manage to do that? Oh, he won the pawn, and then it didn't take him very long from there to win this. Okay, wow. Impressive stuff. He made that look easy. Black got caught with their rook on the first rank. Maybe they were forced to do that, but... Okay, Black is still playing this out, apparently. White did offer a draw. It's completely drawn. What other games do we have going on? Bryakin again? Bryakin likes to play long games. <laughs> He's trying to win this with an extra pawn. Black saying, I have a fortress. What are you going to do? Although it looks like there's a lot of play left here. And what about this other game? Black just won. All right, so last game of round five here, guys. So I'll probably get paired up next game. Although you never know, I have a fairly high blitz rating at the moment. And this game was drawn, repetition. Okay, so whoever I play, let's try to get to four out of six. Here we go. Game over, bro. Hello to game over, bro. Let's play knight f3 this game. Don't know who game over, bro is. NM from Canada. Our friendly neighbors to the north here in Minnesota. Okay, let's play d4. I'll play a Tori against this. Bishop g7, bishop g5. Also try to turn it around with the white pieces. <laughs> Just, yeah, 0 for 2. Granted, I played two good players. 
Um, let's take the center. That GM and the FM who outplayed me. But would definitely like to get two. Four out of six and a win with white. Hmm, F6. Interesting. That move looks very weakening to me. I might try to blast through with e5. We shall see. Never play f6, right? Isn't that what Ben says? Arguably, I should have put the bishop somewhere else, but I kind of like it here on this diagonal. Yeah, maybe just knight c3 now. I'm not going to play e5 quite yet. I want to get a little bit better coordinated. Let's see how black handles this position. Like, now might be a better time to do it, because black might play e5 if I don't. Is there some sort of taking on f3 business at the end? Maybe. Maybe. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chance it. I think this looks very interesting. And black playing this move would be a very big decision. And I feel like black might be hurting on the light squares after that. So take. Okay, now I can play even knight g5 is one move to consider. But let's stick with the plan. Mm -hmm. And let's take with the queen. So if knight takes, I'm going to play bishop b5 check. Ooh. I feel like this must be good for me. Black has to play knight d7. I could take and mess up their king safety quite a bit, but probably better to increase the pressure somehow. Like by castling and quickly trying to get something to e1. Uh, maybe black will play c6. Like c6 is not out of the question here too. Could trade, trade, king f7. Maybe black will do that. Yeah, black actually does go for that. Okay, so take. I gotta play this. Yeah, king f7. Maybe come back to f3 after this. King f8 on the other hand. Okay. King f8. Probably castle short. Yeah, let's castle short. Try to get a rook to e1 quickly. Mm, was there some sort of bishop takes e7 move that I missed there? Maybe not, but it does not matter now. So let's go here. I'm threatening g4, so I expect black to maybe play king g8, some move like that. King e8, okay. Stay active. So just looking to play moves like this. So black definitely can't castle anymore. Important to note. Don't see any great discoveries black has, so I'm going to go here. Knight d5 seems pretty thematic in this position. I'm going to play that. I'm not even really going to calculate if black takes because that looks exceedingly dangerous in view of stuff like g4 or even queen e4. Okay, so knight f4 maybe? Or queen e4? Let's play queen e4, centralize. And if king here, maybe then knight f4 is strong. Or a potential idea. Or g4. g4 also somewhat uh, lurking here. B2's hanging, but I'm not going to care about that right now. On the attack. h6, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Bishop h4? Not sure. Let's just play bishop f4. Although I take away the square I wanted to put my knight on, but all right. Not going to worry about it. Still a good position, I think. Let's play c3 now. Go here. 
All right, I guess now I'm playing this kind of strategic. Looks like a Sicilian of some sort, but I still like my position a lot. I didn't succeed in mating black or really crushing them. But materials equal, I have a dominant knight on d5. This is a really nice piece. I'm just gonna play rook d1 next, keep it simple. We're both getting low on time. Okay. Mm. Let's go here. Mm, maybe allowing this. I can play h4 then, I suppose. Takes g3 though. I'll allow that. He might go win this pawn, like rook f5 or something, but still feels like I should be somewhat better, or at least okay here. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to give him that g-pawn. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to play knight b4 or maybe knight e3. kind of depends. Or rook over. Let's go rook over. Attack that pawn. Play faster, John. Yeah, I think I'm just winning a pawn back here, so this looks good. He can't play rook c7. If he plays a5, I can play knight takes. Yes, rook is out of play, bishop's out of play. So let's take. Mm -hmm. Looking for this. Take that. Hmm. Blockade. Threaten mate. Okay, this should be a winning position for me. Let's control the file before doing anything. Check. Go take his rook. Threatening mate too. Okay. Eventful game. Yeah. Felt I had a big advantage out of the opening. Initiative e5. Check. I was expecting him to play knight d7 here, whereupon I was really liking my chances just down the pond, but massive, massive initiative. He surprised me with this, and yeah, I should be doing really, really well here, but couldn't figure anything out uh, concretely. I mean, the one problem here is I'm not attacking with any of my pawns. I'm kind of relying on my pieces to attack because you can see my pawns are all back here. But given the uncomfortable position of Black's King, the open e-file, half open e-file, I was liking my chances. But I'm glad that I didn't panic, especially when the nature of the game was changing and Black won my pawn. I found a good move here, Rook a4. I knew there had to be something. I was mostly looking at moving this knight to attack d6, but it was dawning on me that if I move the knight, black can play king e7 and defend. So think much better playing what I did. Rook a4, go take the pawn that way. Yeah, and I wish I would have played this a little bit faster, but it was pretty good. Very tricky position for black to defend. I got the knight working. I got the rooks doubled. Yeah, it's... I mean, if white plays reasonable fast moves, black should be losing that every time. So, okay, what do we have for top games. Narditsky won again. Ooh, nice move right there. Queen h6, game ender. Bishop's pinned, so king g8 would be forced and then checkmate. So Narditsky moves to six out of six. What about Swiss power and infernal zam? Oh, I guess these players both dropped a game. They're only on four out of five. <laughs> White should be winning there. Looking for top players. Take a look at the standings again. Three players on six out of six. Narditsky and two Russian players. Operin, who I think has won title Tuesday before. And Temas. FM Temas. Hikaru, five, out of, five and a half out of six. He'll probably be playing that FM. 
if the pairings shake out like this because Naroditsky and Operin, two top players with six, they should play. Okay, kind of a tricky position here. White should be winning, but you know, black's pretty well coordinated at the moment. I would think that black needs to take that pawn soon. Black's maybe trying to stop white's knight from joining the attack. Okay, take. Knight g6, king g4. Hmm, surprise no queen d4 check. Oh, king there. All right. Well, again, it's Title Tuesday. Crazy stuff happens in this tournament, guys. I mean, even though White's pressing here, you just never know what will happen. Knight f4. You really like knight f4 if you're black as a coordination move. Oh, knight f6 check. Bye-bye, rook. All right, now we're going to see White's technique with king and queen against king, knight, and two pawns. And what other games do we have going on here? Paul from SPB and David Paravian. This one a lot closer. Paravian playing for the win, up the pawn. Trying to make something happen here. For the moment, black blockading this important pawn with their queen. But that's a shaky blockade. Yeah, king b7, now this pawn's ready to roll. I think I think black has to engage their knight somehow, but this is looking lost now. Maybe throw on a check here first, just to block queen h7. Swiss power won that game. Ooh, force a trade, and then a6, and I think that is rolling through. Yeah, the knight is blocked out of the game here. I'm not going to stop that. And who else do we have here? Last game. Zibit. Shout out to FM Zibit from Iceland. He's about to win. He's promoting his G-Pawn. He's loving life. Beautiful country, Iceland. I played the Reykjavik Open three or four times. Highly recommend it if you're looking for a good open tournament to play. Oh, please don't do this. Just mate the guy. Come on, Zibit. <laughs> We're all waiting here. I know the guy's not resigning, but everyone else is waiting. He's taking the scenic route, I guess, to, to b6 with his king to mate him. All right. So, round seven coming up. I believe that was the final game of the round. Yep. All right, pulled it D. Let's play knight f3 again. That worked out well in the previous game. Flexible move. I used to play this even before I played d4. And I do get the double white, so another opportunity with the white pieces. And I got paired down a rating too, so let's try to capitalize. A lot of times these transpose to normal d4 openings. You know, so if black plays d5, I usually just play d4 against that. But if black doesn't uh, want to cooperate or wants to play some sort of independent system, sometimes white can profit from not having moved their d-pawn. Is my opponent here? He could be AFK, just running and going getting uh, one of these. Maybe not Starbucks, but some sort of beverage or taking a bathroom break. Let's take a look at the pairings while we're waiting here. Uh, Hikaru, ooh, Hikaru's playing Operin and Narditsky got Temus. Maybe I can peek in on that game while we're waiting. And Hikaru, I'll just have those queued up. Hikaru playing his B3 stuff. He's going for the Larson. Hedgehog style, or hippo style, I should say. Kind of like a hedgehog. Not the animal, but in terms of the setup. Putting all the pawns on the third rank. Staying back, trying to stay flexible, controlling the pawn breaks. My opponent's still not here. So if he comes back with something like a minute 30 or a minute, I'm going to have a massive time advantage. So already this should change my strategy a little bit, right? Potentially a lot, depending upon the position. Playing sharper, trying to consistently pressure him. I mean, I feel bad that he's not there. I'd rather play a full-fledged fight, but 
This is Title Tuesday. You got to be ready to go. And he's going to be trying to beat me. So <laughs> kill or be killed in this tournament and always in competitive chess. You know, you try to be a gentleman within reason, but not a situation where I can give my opponent an abort or something. Okay, bishop f3, yeah, what's Oprin going to do about this knight? I think that was probably a mistake, because now Hikaru's going to try to just bank a pawn here and attack on the king's side. Oprin's probably going to, yeah, I was just about to say, he's probably going to try to open the position somehow. Oprin, open. Looks like I'm going to get a walk over here, guys, if he doesn't move soon. Okay, so Hikaru took the pawn on e4, knight e5, uh, daring him to take again, although I don't know that Hikaru will do that. Maybe. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with it, per se. I guess the big question mark is, is your king if you're Hikaru here? Because you push pawns on both wings pretty aggressively, so. And with the d file now cut off, he's not going there anytime soon. Okay, my opponent played with 16 seconds left, so... Guess we're playing an ultra blitz game here. Again, I'm going to try to make it a little sharper if I can. Let's play d4. Hmm, plays that. Interesting. Okay, let's take the space in the center. Hmm. Okay, we'll establish some middle space. Take this way. Some space in the center of the board. It's castle. Tempted to play e5 right here. Yeah, let's do it. e5 and jump the knight in. Looks nice and active. Knight c6. Let's do it. Establish a pawn very deep in the enemy position. Ideas of c7. Um, probably don't want to play that yet, though, so let's go rookie one. Pawn's hard to deal with for him. Queen here now. Yeah, and this should be awkward for my opponent. Let's take this. Mm-hmm, b5. Just going to develop. So if b4, I play knight d5. Ooh, just go here, right? This should basically be game over. He has bishop e8, I suppose. But looks bad. Looks very bad. He's going to sack his queen, but I even have take on d5 after that. Okay, maybe c7 here. c7 looks nice and brutal. Just defend this guy many times. Take. Mm -hmm. Just go attack one of his rooks. Yeah, he offers a draw, but it's... You know, if we're going to agree a draw, we would have agreed it right at the beginning. And like I said, it's title Tuesday. It's not just a game randomly on chess.com where I would give an abort in that situation, but... Okay, so I moved to 5 out of 7. Let's go back and take a look at Hikaru's game. Yeah, I think I kept up the pressure nicely. I mean, I think once I played queen a4, he's basically close to busted. I win the a7 pawn. He tried for a little bit of counterplay. g6, not sure what that was. Maybe he mouse slipped, meant h6. Okay, Uparin. Look at him. Knight f4. So... Gets to take with check. What is going on here? Still looks good for Hikaru, though, because he's on the bishop here. Okay, so Oprin's going to try to mess up the structure a little bit. Yeah, you got to like the two bishops here. Threat. Rook d7's another idea. And Hikaru's up a, a couple pawns anyways. Right? Like, he has one, two, three, seven pawns to blacks. Now four. Yeah, so he's up three pawns here. He should be winning this, no problem. Mm -hmm. Bishop b3, I like that. Just defend a4. King comes up to e2. And how is Narditsky doing? 
I think Kakaro is going to take that. Naroditsky. Ooh, I don't know. Close position here. It looks like white's better. I mean, knight coming to c6 perhaps, or some sort of squeezing move, b5. They're roughly equal, equal on the clock. Okay, probably just bishop c3 plays bishop b4. All right, looking for a trade. Feels like black is just dying a slow death there. I think these are the only other undefended, uh, undefended, <laughs> undefeated. Been playing too much chess, thinking about too many undefended pieces. The only other undefeated players other than Operin, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, there were just three six out of sixes before this round. All right, I'm going to run to the bathroom again, guys. Too much coffee. I'll leave it on this one because I'm pretty sure Hikaru is going to win that. So I'll be right back. Okay, so Narditsky looks to be getting the better of this because this bishop is hanging. And he does take it. Tough FM though. I mean, the position is still very messy because black's losing some pawns over here. Got to deal with the C pawn as well. Still unclear. I mean, white can go in the F pawn if they want. I would say rook E7 or... Yeah, that move also interesting. Maybe knight E6 is what Narditsky will do, although that was knight F6. Okay, he's playing... To win here. Yeah, and Hikaru did win that. As expected. So he's on 5.5 out of 6. So this is a huge game for Naroditsky. If he can win, he's playing Hikaru with a half point lead. In a title Tuesday, you can't get into a much better situation than that. Because you got to go through big players to win this. And having a half point lead is nice. But, okay, White has a lot of pawns here. So... He does win that one. So if black can win this pawn here, he's got chances. I mean, yeah, he's pressing. Ooh, okay. What's happening here? Weird configuration. I, I would think you want to go after this pawn. Yeah, this is still so unclear, though. Knight f4 or knight f8. He's threatening take, take, rook f6. Such a sharp position still. Check. Can you avoid a draw here? Looks like he's going to take the draw. And if you're white, I don't see why you would avoid it. Yeah. Oof. Interesting game. Tough fight. What other games can we take a look at? Itura Zaga. Severmorskij. White wins. Going to win this pawn. It'll be up two connected pawns. In a rook ending, that's almost always winning. Swiss power. This is similar to the rook and two versus rook and one ending that we had earlier in the tournament. That game that was going on for a very long time it started out as four versus three. And black is doing something similar actually, trying to make use of their king, but white is keeping that king cut off, which I think if you're white, you should. You should try to do that for a while. So king f2 or something. Okay, he goes after this pawn. Black will probably play rook a5, or maybe, maybe make a dash in with the king. Give up the f pawn, try to push the e pawn. Yeah, you could play e3 or king d3 here if you were white, but no, he thinks better of it. And now probably a check is going to be played. 
put black will put the rook here and white can go right back to f7 maybe or maybe you want to go to a7 so you have checks from the side yeah so if king here you can check from the side i would have gone to a7 though more checking distance who is gm swiss power noel St noel studer okay i've heard of him don't really know much about him but heard of him so if he wins he gets to six out of five still a long ways to go for him to win that Ooh, but white playing with fire here this pawn's gonna run yeah you can't do this if you're white now your king's in the, in the way of the pawn white's gonna lose got to keep that king back so under pressure white is going down and this is the last game of the round all right so three rounds remaining i'm on five out of seven playing well just had that quick victory because my opponent started the game with 16 or 17 seconds left let's try to capitalize warrior zero nine one one okay i am from turkey looks like a pretty young player by their avatar let's do this let's play a scandy i haven't played a scandy yet today uh i'll play queen d8 okay the usual Mm -hmm. Bishop f4. I have some experience in this variation. Castle's queenside, bishop b4. Been a while since I played this, but I'll do my best to remember. I don't like taking on d4. I think that leads to sharp stuff that is potentially in white's favor. So This is a newer line. I actually did an update on this maybe a year and a half ago on Chessable in my Scandi repertoire. Okay, knight e4, let's take and play queen d5. Standard stuff. Force the trade of the queens, otherwise I take a2. In these middle games, white has the bishop pair, but black can try to attack on the queen side in some cases. Ooh, queen e5, interesting. That's an ambitious move, so I can trade and I also... Of course can take here but i think white's idea is c3 and they're basically daring me to do this which honestly i'm really tempted to do because i like grabbing pawns i know i'm thinking about this for a while here i can play the bishop back to f8 at that point which is kind of what i'm thinking about here guys i'm gonna do it wait take c3 bishop f8 Maybe queen c7 is a problem. Queen c7 could be an issue. Thinking about this again. Okay, don't want to spend too long here, but this is an important decision. Take c3. Don't think checking really helps me much, at least initially. Ah, I'm torn. All right, let's take. Let's take in castle. Spent a long time on that, minute 16. But now let's play faster. Definitely going to check that one after the tournament, but let's put it out of our minds for now. Go here. Some ideas of bishop to d6. He may play bishop h4 against that, but we shall see. Uh, let's start with h6. I may want to put the pawn on g6, so I don't know about this, but let's see what happens. Go here. Still looking for this. He'll probably keep the bishop pair. That is advisable. Let's play b5. Let's grab some space. Hmm. Get the king a little bit closer. He may push f5. Take it. Now maybe bishop f4. 
or rook e8. Rook e8, mm, he's going to put his bishop on e4. Do I care about that? Let's go here. Seems a bit more combative. Maybe rook e8 coming next, depending upon where he goes. The bishop on g3 is pretty annoying for him, I think. Well as bishop d7. Go here. Thinking maybe this. Got to make up some of this time, though. That was a lot of time that I burned. Takes, he can trade and then maybe try for some rook f5 business, but he's got to watch knight e3, so perhaps there'll be a swap. But I think I should try to deprive him of the bishop pair, otherwise I might get squeezed with the position opening up. take bring this up prepare for the other rook to come over I'm not going to contest the file yet I'm just going to try to be solid here play this see where that rook wants to go Let's do this. This is covered. I'm trying to make some sort of slow progress here. You can take d5. I'll take with a pawn. Goes there. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I'll keep the structure together. Try to activate my king. Maybe sneak in? I don't know. This bishop on f3 is being pretty irritating. So he's going to put a stop to that. Okay. Probably play h4 now. Mm hmm. Hangs this pawn, perhaps. Although I could play rook h8 after a trade. Ooh, maybe this, though. Maybe I can cut off his bishop. And try to play rook h8 next. Okay, let's go here. Gonna attempt to run my g-pawn. Okay, take. Mm hmm. Ah, shouldn't have allowed that. Tax G two. Now I'm relying on tactics to be able to check and take, although I'm facing a ton of pawns if that happens. Okay, go here. I could have played rook e1 as well. Yeah, it's just hard to move here. Don't really know what to do in this position. Try to bring my king over, I guess. Take. 
take. Yeah, probably just losing now, facing too many pawns. Yeah, he managed his time a lot better than I did in that game. Okay. Hmm. So lost with the Scandi, always sad when that happens. Key moment was when I played G4, but honestly, I... I got to avoid these situations. Like, I think I'm already just in trouble here because of the time, <laughs> basically. If I had more time, I might have been able to figure something out in this position, but it's it's sharp and I don't have the time. Sad story. <laughs> yeah, take. Might just be in trouble here because, again, the G-pawn is my only asset in this position. And once he got in bishop e7, he's always capable of giving up his bishop for the for the pawn. I probably should have played rook e1 right here. I just noticed it right after the fact. Rook e1, because then I'm threatening g1 equals queen. So take, I could have got this a little bit earlier. Maybe had a chance to keep the rooks on the board and fight. Because I think he made a, a good decision when he traded the rooks. It's probably just a losing endgame for me. Yeah, I'm trying to fight on two sides of the board. King and a knight, especially a knight. Knight is not a long-range piece, so it's tough. Uh, let me go to Hikaru's game. He won. He took down the FM. All right, so he is on 7.5 out of 8. Narditsky's playing Operin, and Narditsky lost. Okay, that's rough for him. It's too bad. I was rooting for him. Who else we got here? Vlad Dobrov and Sugirov. Some games finishing up. Two games remaining in the tournament. Let's try to finish well here. I'm still on a good score. So Hikaru looks like he'll be a half point clear. I don't see anyone who can potentially catch him. Nope, doesn't look like it. Who's this GM? So many GMs who I just don't know who they are. Stanislav Bogdanovich. Okay. I don't know who Lunatic X is either. Peter McCulchick, McCulloch. Oh, Grishuk's still playing. Grishuk's on five and a half. That tells you how tough Title Tuesday is. So Grishuk going into this round only had half a point more than me. And Grishuk is, let's check out what his world ranking is right now. For classical chess, Grishuk is number seven in the world, 2766 as of July. So the number seven player in the world was only on five and a half out of seven going into this tournament, or into this round, I should say. It's tough in an online blitz event, but that's Title Tuesday. It brings out some of the strongest players. Still a good score, though. He's on six and a half now. Six and a half out of eight is definitely nothing to sneeze at in this event. All right. Rich 97, I get black again. Makes sense. I had double white earlier. Let's try to win this game. Come on. I can't drift into the old habits like I did in the last game. Let's play a Sicilian again this time. Play a con. Finish my coffee. I'm onto the tea now. Very cold tea. <laughs> it's like iced tea now. Okay, queen c7. Let's see what my opponent has in store against the Khan. I like to play bishop b4 here. Try to draw this knight back to e2. And then I often play bishop e7 and d6. Okay, he's just going to offer to let me take. But I'm not going to take him up on that yet at least. I don't want to weaken my dark squares, give him the initiative, so we'll just leave this threat hanging over his head, see how he deals with it. Mm. 
Okay, plays f4. Hmm. So now I'm more seriously contemplating taking, but I still don't like the weaknesses on the dark squares. Like he'll play, he'll play knight b3 after I take twice. So still gonna try to postpone this decision. Just play a useful move, d6, stops e5 ideas. It blocks my bishop from coming to e7, but I've seen plenty of lines where you know the bishop will go to c5 at some point. Also possible. I could play knight c6 next move if I want, and try to threaten knight takes d4. Although the position will probably change a little bit. He's spending a lot of time. This is good. Keep doing that, Rish. <laughs> I mean, knight b3 is playable even here. Yeah, he plays it. But I don't necessarily have to take still, so let's just play knight bd7. Maybe knight c5. I'd also like to try to play b5 at some point. Maybe I can play rook b8 first. I don't want to run into e5 when I play b5. So yeah, let's play rook b8. I think discoveries shouldn't work because of the weakness of his king. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him. Yeah, I was just going to say a move like that. Not surprising at all. Um, maybe knight c5 here. I think that was reasonable, because again, he can do discoveries, but I'm on the e4 pawn. Maybe I can get a trade in here and then put my bishop on c5. Something to that effect. Turning to take c3, take e4. Huh. He's going to allow me to do that. Okay, I gotta take him up on this. Maybe I should have taken the other way, I don't know. Goes bishop b4, and now I feel like I should play b5, or b6 even, b6 followed by bishop b7. Let's do that. This is secure, right? I think it's fine. I also have the c5 square if I want to pivot. So if he plays like g4, yeah, this should be okay. Yeah, let's go here. Hmm. Because of this, I'm taking with check. So he's probably not going to want to do that. He might play f5, like really make it crazy. Although he drops g5 if he does that. So I think I'm in great shape here. I'm up a pawn, beautiful pawn structure. He is gonna go for that, but seems quite risky to me. Maybe queen g4 is his idea, huh? Okay, so in that case, maybe I should take. Yeah, let's take, I think taking is safer. Taking maybe knight c5. Love to get my knight into f2 at some point, but he's going to stop that, of course. This g-pawn actually kind of hinders his attack, so... Yeah, I think I like this. Knight d4. Just get this over. Into the attack. I want to keep this defending f7 for now, so that's why I use that rook. You can play an ugly move like bishop e1, but... I think largely his bishop is having a hard time doing stuff here. Hmm. Thinking about rook e5 or maybe some sort of queen. Let's play queen d7. I have some sneaky ideas in mind. Oh, that probably don't work, but we'll see what he does here. I was thinking about some queen g3 biz or queen h3 business. Maybe it's good to play g6 here. Let's do it. Because I can try to win g5 for one thing if he moves his rook. But yeah, I'm actually thinking of putting my queen in here when he moves his rook. Like, I can play that in this position, threatening knight g3. It's a pretty interesting shot. And he can't take it because a knight f2 check and double mate. Double check and mate, I should say. No, but he might just play rook f3, so probably just take here. 
Yeah, I'm also threatening knight h3 here. Just take. There's maybe some knight f5 business I should have looked at, but... Okay, he plays that. I think I can play knight h3 here. Man, his queen d4 stuff, though. What about this? Is this bad if I take? Let's try it. We're both running low on time. Uh, just play f6. Go here. I still want this move, if possible. Should be winning. Should be winning. Yeah, lost on time. Okay. Slowed down considerably when I was trying to convert that, but it did get kind of sharp. Yeah, knight f5, it's funny, like I was, I was talking about that move. It's probably just unsound, because the problem here is even though the g-file is opened up, if ever he moves the bishop, something's going to happen on this diagonal. Like, I'll take his bishop, or if he takes mine, I get to take back with check, and that always slows him down. So I think, I think taking is fine. I almost got a little obsessed with trying to bring my queen to h3, but I'm glad I didn't. Okay, let's take a look at Hikaru. He drew a pretty quick draw in this one. He's probably happy with that result. Operin and Moskalenko, two sevens. Or G6, interesting. Looks like Black's playing for the win here. Although, I don't know. It's sharp. I would predict a draw in that game. And some other ones going on here. Lunatic lost. Narditsky. Ooh, trying to hold down two pawns. Opposite color bishops, but can he succeed in drawing this? It'll be tough. Probably, probably losing. If black can start advancing these pawns, you want to get this pawn to a3, this pawn to b2, with the bishop supporting. I would suspect this is losing, especially since the king can march in. Yeah, I think it is losing. White's king can't ever get to a square to assist. Like, this this pawn doesn't even matter. So white can win it, but even if white plays this, black could just put the bishop on h7 and keep the status quo. So yeah, that's winning. Pawn's coming up here, pawn here. See how the winning plan for black involves putting the pawns on the same color as white's bishop, white's dark square bishop. So that's what was going to happen. Okay, Operin. Yeah, now I think White trying to win, but tough stuff here. Black might play this move. Just possible, isn't it? As if h7 at that point. Okay, so there, maybe some king g2 plan. If he takes c3. He's gonna go for it. So king g2, maybe f3 check is the idea. Yeah, f3, and he's going to try to, by force, get the rook back over to the h-file to start to stop the h-pawn. Yeah, check. Now rook h2. This should be a draw, because black's pawns are pretty significant here, so white's going to have to come back and stop them soon. Yeah, rook there. Take e6, take c5. King f6, or take there. Yep. And we will have a draw. So what other games do we have left? Here are the standings as well. Okay, because Hikaru gave up that draw, Padeni, who was, I already forgot the guy's name, Peter, Peter Mikalchik, Mikalik. So they will play in the last round. Some big action there. I wish I could watch as well. I mean, I want to do well myself, but I'm going to pull that game up right away. Maybe we'll peek in on it, depending upon what's happening in my game. 
Thank you guys for watching this. Heading into the final round here, let's get the last game up if there is. Oh, there's several games. Okay, so the FM from Russia, Temis Galaktyanov is going down. He's played the, well, though. He had that real quick start. He was, I think, 6 out of 6. And now has dropped some. But kudos to him for fighting well, playing well above his rating. Whoa, chaotic position here. Four queens on the board. Looks like black one, though. White ran out of time. JK13 wins. There's probably only one or two games left. Krikor. Krikor trying to win here. Looks like he is. This is sort of the situation I had defending against the, those all those pawns when I had the knight. Just too many pawns to cope with. Your defenses are split. Even though black has a rook in this case, the king... Is trying to stop the H pawn. You know, Krikor, yeah, blocking move right there. That pawn's going to promote. So Krikor wins. And that's it. All right, final round coming up, guys. Let's try to win this. I mean, I'm already on a positive score. So if I can get to seven or six and a half, say seven, that would be awesome. I'd be very happy with that. I am Agasayev Kamal, another Turkish player. Okay, let's play knight f3. See if he wants a Benoni. All right, we're going to get another Benoni. I'll play the same variation. Knight c3, bishop f4. Bishop g7, h3. Mm, a very early knight h5 for my opponent. Interesting. Well, I would assume bishop g5 is the move here. I don't exactly know, but just going to make that assumption. Let's go here. Try to make it tough for him to castle. A4, standard reaction, stop B5. This is interesting. Already off beat. Okay. Um, I almost feel like I should play E4 now, even though you don't usually want to play like that in this setup. Could play Queen D2 as well. Mm, nah, let's just play E3. And keep the pawn back. I mean, he, he's probably going to play bishop f8, and I might have to agree to a trade. But I'm not even sure that dark square bishop trade is that bad for me, because often in this structure, uh, black's dark square bishop is a good bishop. Okay, so he plays f5, very aggressive. Let's go here. And bishop f6. Hmm. Okay, castle. Tempted to open things up e4, or again, maybe knight d2. I guess he's getting ready to castle, huh? He wants to castle next move. Could play knight g5. That's an interesting try here, although it's bad, I think. Let's try to mix this up. I'm in the mood to put my opponent under pressure. Plays king f7. Hmm. Bishop d3 now, perhaps? Or take? Okay, spending a little too much time here, but I'm in unfamiliar territory and I'm trying to keep the pressure. Hmm. Okay, let's go bishop d3. I'm expecting knight e5 against this. Let's take. He's going to take with a bishop. And now I could go f4 if I wanted. Let's play like that. Bishop d4, king h1. His queen might come to h4, but I'm kind of banking on the fact that I have queen uh, bishop to g5 against that. He takes. Okay, interesting. Okay, lots of trades here. Hmm. I think I'm just going to keep this simple now. Take, take, put the queen on h5. And try to attack. Rook f3 ideas. Also a rook here. Although he does have queen g6. Which do I want to play first?
I think rook here. Queen g6, I check. That seems kind of bad for him. King f8, queen h4. His rooks are disconnected. Seems hard for him to move if that happens. Leave this rook up for a rook lift if I can. My next move, if I get the chance, rook e6. 100%. Okay, so check. You know, I could trade and take b7, but I think it's much better to keep the pressure because he has a hard time moving here. g3 now. Probably has to play rook g7 or something, and I can double up. Yeah, let's double. Ideas like this. Could have also played that on the previous move too, but I'm trying to derive some benefit from playing it now with the other rook. Hmm. So now if he plays queen here, I actually, I think I have rook check. Maybe that's not winning though somehow. He has to go for a walk. Oh, I hate these decisions because I feel like I'm close to winning, but don't quite know. The check g7. Okay, I'm going to go for this. If he goes to g6, he loses, yeah. Don't know here. Check there, check. He's getting out, amazingly. Okay, let's take, I guess. If he takes with the king, I think the pawn ending might be a win for me. Okay, so check. Awful time management, though, with that. Still better. Hmm. Let's bring the king up. Go take d6. Still playing for a win. Just going to try to do this. Oh, oh, okay, nope. I thought he had mate for a second. I realized I have king g2. I saw only queen h5, and then I saw queen g4, which is tricky. Oh, man. Give myself a heart attack here, guys. At least the plan is simple at this point. Push and hope he doesn't have a perp. I can play h3. My king's actually really safe there. h3, stop queen g4, and if queen e4 I can just take, oh, yikes, he's threatening some trickiness there, it's very tricky. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna force this trade. I know we're getting into another queen ending. K 
Okay, check. Hmm. Let's protect everything first. Everything on protected squares. Definitely not taking a draw. I'm gonna have to wander a bit with my king though. Oh, maybe it's not possible to wander. Oh, I wandered in a perpetual. Man, that was bad. Well, at least I didn't get mated, but no, oh, man. Yikes. Yeah, very disappointed I didn't win that. I think there were multiple wins, probably right around here. But some tricks to avoid, like this, running into mates. That's what happens when you get down on time. It's just like, uh, even here, king g5, I can't take, or I can't play d7 yet, because queen g6, king h4, queen h6. So, bummer. Yeah. This was rough. I really struggle with these situations. Here, let me put up a cars game. I totally meant to do that, and I did not. Oh, Black is playing for the win here. Hikaru is going to have to suffer. But yeah, I really struggle with those situations where I'm almost spoiled for choice. There's almost too many good moves, and I have to decide on one. So it's a pretty typical spot in a chess game, especially a fast time control. So that, that point where I was thinking of whether to play rookie 8 check or not is a perfect example of that. I mean, I think it is a good move. It might even win by force somehow, but I didn't find it. And I spent so long trying to figure it out that... I didn't leave myself enough time to convert the rest of the game. And at the end, I blundered in a perpetual. I think it actually is a perpetual at the end because my king is in a really bad spot. He can check me around. Even if I go to g4 followed by h4, still not possible to do much. Hmm. So disappointing. My score was good this, this event, though, but yeah, that was a bit of a disappointing end. Be interesting to see if black can win this. So black wants to try to sack on a2 sometime soon. Ooh, he can try it now, but yeah, white's king is getting close. So like if check here, king d1. Now Hikaru probably debating whether he can play that. Yeah, and if Take, take, king a2 at the end, and it's a draw. Nicaro's going to play fast because he doesn't want to give white any chance to figure this out. Or any chance for black to figure this out. King c3. Check. Probably getting into some repetition territory now, depending upon where this rook is. It does seem to be a draw. I would have a hard time finding a plan here for sure. This is just, you gotta solve that basic issue, like how do you ever take this pawn without allowing the trade and king coming to c2 or c1. Can't ever really put white in Zugzwang here. The bishop has too long of a diagonal. Okay, so they drew. So congratulations to Hikaru and also Grandmaster uh, Padiani Zvezvid. <laughs> Butchered that name. So can anyone catch them? Ah, someone did. Genghis K. And also Komandoras123. Okay, so yeah, pretty rare title Tuesday where multiple players score 8.5 out of 10. So no 9s, no 9.5s. 8.5 out of 10 is the winning score. Any other games in play that could affect the final standings? Nope, that's it. Okay, and Padzieni takes first on tie breaks, Genghis K second, and Hikaru third. All right. I didn't see where I ended up. Maybe we can check the standings real quick. The final standings if they update. Scored six and a half. Not bad. But again, really felt I should have got to seven, though, with that last game. 
I did have that one, you know, semi semi walkover game because my opponent played with 16 seconds left. But okay, got 51st. I scored the same amount of points as Grishuk. All right, but yeah, I give myself, I'd say. I'd say a B plus for how I played this tournament. That's my grade for this event. Definitely better than before, but not my A game. I really want to avoid games like the one I lost to uh, Warrior 0911 this game, where I just got horribly behind on the clock. Like this was me slipping back into my old habits. I got to give myself credit though. Some of the other games I did play well, played fast. Uh, again, this one also, this last game, really, really kicking myself for not winning this. But that's that's what the clock situation can do to you. It can can make fools of us all. Yeah, even in hindsight here, I could play check and then d7. I'm winning no sweat in that position. But just didn't have a whole lot of time. I played h3, thought I was safe. He played queen c6 and didn't figure it out. So happens, guys. Anyways, thank you for following my progress in this July 2019 Title Tuesday. It was really fun. I'll be back again soon with another video. Let me know if you have any feedback. Also. Let me know your answer to that question I posed. Do you prefer to play white or black in Blitz? I'll be curious about that. All right, have a good one, guys. See you later.